them to meet you in the library. Are you crazy? Miss Garrison, I'm surprised you know where my office is. Take the lock off that gym. My phone hasn't stopped ringing. Maybe someone on the other end of that phone has a solution to our problem. Your intentions are good, Mr. Carter, but your methods are a bit extreme. You painted an extreme picture. No one expects them to graduate. No one expects them to go to college. So you take away basketball, the one area of their lives where they have some success? Yes, ma'am. And you challenge them academically? Yes, ma'am. And what if they fail? Then we fail. Unfortunately, Mr. Carter, both you and I know that for some of these kids, this basketball season will be the highlight of their lives. Well, I think that's the problem. Don't you? you've opened? Oh, I get all the blame now? Let's just say I'm happy to give you all the credit. <laughs> I've got every news reporter in town waiting to speak to you. I've got a press conference set up around the front of the gymnasium. Coach Carter has taken the lockout to the next level by canceling last night's game. Richmond forfeited the game, making it their first loss of the season. And for now, the lock remains on the gym. Here he comes. Here he comes now. Coach Carter. Coach. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you for your patience. At this time, I'd like to introduce Coach Ken Carter. You may direct your questions to him. Mr. Coach, Mr. Carter, it is unfair to the players whose grades qualify them to play. Basketball is a team sport, sir. We support each other. I'd like to make a motion. Yes, Mr. Walters. I move that we remove Mr. Carter as head basketball coach. This board does not have the authority to terminate employment of a staff position. Then I move we end the lockout and let the kids play. Yeah. I second the motion. OK. If I may. Yes, Mr. Carter. You really need to consider the message that you're sending these boys. It's the same message that we as a culture send to our pro athletes, which is that they are above the law. Now, I'm trying to teach these boys a discipline that will inform their lives and give them choices. If you endorse the fact that 15, 16, and 17-year-olds don't have to honor the simple rules of a basketball contract, how long do you think it'll be before they're out there breaking laws? Now, I played basketball at Richmond 30 years ago. It was the same thing then. Some of my teammates ended up in prison. Some of them ended up dead. I took this job because I wanted to affect change in a special group of young men, and this is the only way I know how to do that. If you vote to end the lockout, you won't have to terminate me. I'll quit. Good. 